Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And we spent the last uh, stream, the last few hours, trying to boost some of the uh, production of a lot of our resources. Unfortunately, we were down to three players in the last stream because uh, Mike was uh, otherwise engaged, and so Mark has spent a significant amount of time pretending to be Mike. So he decided he'd go in and have a quick look at uh, what what Mike has been doing over on over on Kothar and try and sort of streamline production a bit and make sure everything was going to be working reasonably quickly and producing the uh, the iridium that we need. So he's gone through and tinkered with a number of things over here. Top of the list is going around and distributing the uh, tier six productivity modules that are in these machines and and changing some of the priorities so that we're going to be doing as much tier six productivity moduled construction as possible because this as you as I'm sure you're aware makes the uh, makes everything a bit more efficient and so the way this has been done is that we Mark has put in some uh, priorities on the various different belts over here so you can see these ones are running all the time then these ones are running whenever there's more than three thousand in the warehouse. Now, notably, we've also got a thing over here that's stopping this loading in from the uh, trains up here whenever there's more than uh, up above 2,000. Um, and so this means in, as, long as, this, as long as we're running from the, um, from the stuff being brought in from the mines, we're only going to be using this quarter of the, of, of the factory, which is possibly a little bit limited, especially given that we're a bit short. And I think I know, I know why he's done it. He's done it to make sure that we're being as efficient as possible with the, uh, with the, with the um, input, because these ones down here have the tier 6 modules, whereas these ones over here and the other ones up here are only on tier threes but I think given that the um, given that we have a shortage of iridium and we um, coming out at the other end and we have plenty of iridite coming in as these trains are showing um, I think that means we should probably nudge this over to be a little bit more generous we are however always making sure that we're using all of the stuff that's produced from the core mining so as you can see here any, anything that comes in from core mining which is this train which is currently not doing anything and of course the core miner here will then dribble up here and be put into the into the warehouse over here so this means if we did get a large quantity being brought in by from, uh, from the core mines we could then get the rest of the system to check to, to kick in but in, in the um, in the meantime anything that's being uh, made made from the uh, from the actual non infinite resources is only being done at, at tier 6 productivity over here we've got exactly the same sort of thing so once again we've got the other uh, prioritizations up here we're saying um, no no priority on no no, no rule on this one this one runs when there's more than 5,000 this one runs when there's more than 10,000 and 15,000 so the each quarter of this will kick in independently in turn and so again we've got the tier 6 modules in the in the chemical plants up here and tier 3s in the ones down here that shouldn't be being used um, but will be if we get an, a bit of extra flow through for one reason or another and then there's been some upgrades in the belts as well so we've now got a, a blue belt coming out here in fact I suspect in general there's been quite a lot of upgrades here because I think uh, Mike generally built with red belts and I think Mark has now upgraded quite a lot of that to blue belts all the way through here um, I could be wrong about that but it does it does feel like that uh, I, that is my sort of suspicion anyway that, that then in, in again up here we've got oh, We've actually only got tier three uh, productivity modules in these uh, in these centrifuges. That's something that might be worth upgrading. But you know, tier six modules are kind of expensive, so we've. I think this is why we've not been using as many of them as we might be. And then we've got the same sort of prioritization going on here with the uh, with the splitters, uh, sending it up to the top first. Although again, there don't seem to be quite as many tier sixes up here as I would uh, would would like. For given given that, um, I think this might be a little bit a little bit work in progress, and a few more modules are needed in order to get this up and running uh, as nicely as it should. Apparently, there was also a shortage of uh, hydrogen chloride so uh, Mark's put in a new system down here pulls in stone pulverizes it to sand as required and then feet and then processes it through here this switches on and off because this is a secondary hydrogen chloride production facility there's always already another one over on the other side of the area and that's using up the sand that's produced by the various different processes so it uh, so we want that one to be a priority however when this whenever this dips below uh, 100,000 in this tank up here uh, as in when it's half full then this will kick in as you see here with and then we start making a load more sand and we can and we can start making the hydrogen chloride a bit quicker and that's enabling everything to keep up. Mark has also dismantled the uh, capsule making that was in over here so as, as this is the uh, the usual system that you've seen a million times before where we, we bring in the uh, the core chunks like this There's a, they're coming into at a dribble and then these are processed down into all of the uh, the mundane resources and and uh, and then shipped off to uh, to wherever they're needed. Uh, some of this is being turned in as you can see here being turned into uh, barrels to be turned into uh, to, to take away the oil and the petroleum gas and from what Mark has said there was been a, there was an excessive tank up there's a tank up here with an excess of petroleum gas in it that we're trying that we've been trying to get rid of and um, because this whole system had jammed up because we weren't shipping off all of the um into all of these uh, resources back over to uh, Norbit which meant it was everything was clogging up and it was causing problems with the uh, 
problems with the core processing and therefore all of this had stopped and so all of the core mines had also shut down as well so we were only making iridium from the uh, from the main from the from the normal mines the, the non-infinite ones and so this is now going to be significantly better we can get rid of all the byproduct resources here send them off to Norvis to be reprocessed and get and get out what we need at the other end it is going to take a while and quite a lot of barrels to get rid of all of the uh, the stockpile petroleum gas though so that's going to take some time but eventually eventually it'll all be tidied up up in Kothar orbit, um, Marcus finished off the train um, fueling system up here. It turned out that um, the batteries weren't being taken out and recharged properly. They were they, they were being just left in the train, so they accumulated and accumulated and accumulated, and eventually the train stopped. So now there's yes, there's oh see there's a. Um, a battery pack charging station here, so the batteries will immediately will be taken out, recharged, and put back in again. I think Mike did that. Yes, he did. So, but presumably Mark put in the uh, yes, Mark put in this inserter here to get rid of the the broken batteries, the ones that didn't charge up properly, and so those can then be passed up here and dumped in with the rest of the scrap and taken away by the but uh, by the spaceship over here. And as you can see, there's a, there's a few of them in the in the warehouses there. And so it, it's been a little bit of going around and tinkering with things to, to try and make sure that the system actually works rather than just sort of have it, having all kinds of bottlenecks and, and things that will then fall over. Um, Mark says he's tried not to just completely rebuild the whole thing in, in his style um, and just go in and sort of fix the problems that he found. Uh, we'll see what Mike thinks about it when he comes back next week, I guess. Still on Kothar, a, another problem that Mark found was that uh, these systems over here, these warehouses, had filled up completely with uh, vulcanite, and that had backed up all the way along here and jammed up the train system here. So the trains were coming down, and they weren't able to unload here like they're, like they're supposed to in order to then take away the resources back up to back up to space again. Uh, and this turned out to be because down here. One of these com combinators wasn't connected properly, and so the system was just requesting more and more and more and more vulcanite to the point that there was about 850,000 vulcanite on this planet. And as you can see, we've still got um, best parts of 100,000 in each one of these warehouses. So Mark has again went in and sort of pushed stuff around a little bit, tried to get some of it flowing through. I think I think there might have been a, a warehouse or two in here that was uh, that was set that was uh, limited. So he's he's created some extra space in there, and that has meant that he's now able to pull the vulcanite through from here and so other things are able to start kind of sort of working again. I'm not sure why, oh, you know, I do know why this. Yes, the petroleum and oil barrels seem to have ended up in here, though, and that looks like, I suspect that's because they're not being unloaded at the other end. Okay, now I was going to say presumably the unloading system over here has filters on it, but it doesn't, so I'm not sure why those barrels have ended up there, because they should all be dumped out onto, into, the, into the disposal system and taken up here to be taken away by the spaceship. Um, oh, no, I do know why. It's because the spaceship hasn't been set to not unload those things from the spaceship. So they went up to be loaded into the spaceship, got put in the spaceship, then got taken back out of the spaceship because, um, because they weren't on the, on the list of approved things to be taken away from this planet. And then flowed down here, around here, into here, as you can see with all these barrels here, and then back down on the train, back down here, where they've been accumulating in these warehouses where we don't know what to do with them. So that's going to be another another little fix that's going to need to be made. These The, the barrels can just be transferred over to here. Maybe have a belt put in that does it permanently full time because I think there's some more up there that are going to be coming back down down again as well or maybe just tidy the whole thing up by hand uh, and make sure they end up in the right place so that is at least that is fixable However, the main reason uh, we were messing around with the uh, spaceships and what they do from, Co uh, on, from on Kothar was to, in order to get a bit more mineral water being brought over. Because as you can see, this tank here is empty. Down here there is, oh actually down here there's 32,000. So there's at least, there is a bit down here. There's not enough to fill a train, but well, at least we've got a little bit. So we decided that because the mineral water is essentially the limiting factor for the, um, the iridium production, that's the one thing we weren't bringing in in large enough quantities and we had a bit, of a, a bit of a shortage of it. Now with the extra productivity modules we've got, there is just, we can make just about enough iridium from a spaceship's worth of mineral water in order to fill the spaceship back up again. However, that means that when the spaceship is in transit, heading back off to Norvis and then back over again, there won't be any available mineral water, and so the system will essentially shut down while it waits for the spaceship to come back out and bring some more to it. And so, we've now got this set up to... Um, why are they powered? They shouldn't be powered. Oh, that's because that's, that's a, yeah, sub, a substation, not a pylon. Okay, so we've now got the spaceship set up to depart when it runs out of, or vir virtually runs out of mineral water, and then it will then it will depart. And so that means that when it'll turn up here, it'll drain all the mineral water out and hopefully unload anything else that it's brought with it, like uh, vulcanite and so on. Then it will, then as soon as it's done, once it's done that, rather than waiting until we've had enough iridium brought up to fill it up again, the spaceship will depart enough in order to go back to Norbit and get some more mineral water and bring it over. And hopefully that will allow us to have a little bit more 
a buffer in all of these tanks here and down here on the planet, where, yeah, as you can see, these are the, these are all now full. So this seems to have worked quite well. We've now got a plentiful supply of the mineral water available, which means we can carry on producing iridium even when the spaceship isn't there, as you can as you can see by the fact it's still flowing over here. So that's made a big difference. I think that'll that'll help a lot and keep and keep the yes supply a bit a bit steadier and a bit more reliable. Unfortunately, this additional demand on the mineral water over here led to some problems, and these have actually now been fixed, as you can see by the fact this tank is full and this tank over here is is, is half full. So that that's gone well. We've now managed to restock a decent supply of the mineral water over here for it to be brought up to Kothar. However, there were some problems with it because the core processing over here down on Norvis was not producing enough mineral water in order to keep the system happy. So um, we're producing a certain amount of it from here as we crush the core chunks, and that's going over to go into this tank here, which is now actually now very nearly full. That's um, interesting. We may need we may need to play with some of the numbers here a little bit because uh, this tank has now has, has now got to the point where it's basically full, um, which is which is a, a bit surprising. Anyway, um, but in order to get this coming through a bit quicker because we had such a shortage of it, I discovered there was a mineral water patch just over here, right next to the core processing. So I've dropped in some of these uh, mineral water pump jacks they're pumping out into this tank and then I've got that set to push push uh, mineral water through whenever there's a shortage of it on the system so if there's less than 50,000 available it will then start to pump it through and that will add a little bit more to the, uh, to the supply we have available. The thing that makes this a little bit ridiculous is that we also have a couple of mineral water mines uh, including this one down here which was set up absolutely ages ago by me and I'd completely forgotten about it um, because, and I set this one up because at the time the, uh, the core processing wasn't producing enough mineral water to make the uh, the amount of lithium we needed then. And the lithium requirements have gone down a little bit since, but there's still quite a lot of it required. But the trains that were bringing the mineral water over from uh, from that new mine down here were only bringing it to the lithium processing. They weren't bringing it over here to the space changeover station. So there's, there's, there isn't a train here at, the, here at the moment either, which is a little bit unfortunate. Oh, it has gone to that. It's gone to that mine over there, though, and it's now heading back over. So presumably this train has now been configured to go to whichever mine is, 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 um, is, is best, is nearest. And and whichever mine is best, well, this seems actually seems to be going to the wrong one. Maybe this one's ended up being closer than this one. I thought it wasn't, but the fact that this one up here is completely full uh, and the train has hasn't is still gone to this one down here means there's a bit of a problem there, which we'll need to take a look at because we don't we don't want to complete we want to take the mineral water away from here because if we don't, then it fills up and we start venting it, and that's a waste. Yeah, in fact, we are venting it at the moment, and that is, as I say, that is a waste. We don't want to do that. We want to keep it available as a as, as a nice happy supply. Um, so we're going to need to fiddle with the prioritization system, do some do some sh shenaniganry, just to make sure that the trains get it from the place where they're supposed to. And part of the reason I mention the extra mine here is because apparently Mark has also put in an additional um, mineral water mine. I have no idea where it is, but apparently he did. And then after he'd already built it, he realised that there was this one down here that was uh, produced. Well, it has another seven and a half million available, so that's going to last for quite a long time. Um, so yeah, it's a little, little bit of an oops there, but never mind. We, we don't, having an extra supply is never is never a pro is never a bad thing because we will probably use it up sooner or later. It looks like the fix on for the uh, for getting the train to come over not not here not not you. But getting this train to come over here to unload the mineral water was, uh, was was Tristan's doing, and that's usually the case when it comes to train stuff. He is he's generally the one in charge of trains on our in, in our uh, run. Um, so yes, I guess it's going to be up to him to sort out why this one went out to the uh, to the mineral water mine down here. Rather than the uh, rather than the one up here, well, uh, if we keep an eye on this one for a second, it's going to set off. Where's it going? Yeah, it's going back down there. So that's that's wrong, presumably because that is presumably because there is considered closer than up here. And I can eh, I don't know eyeballing it. It they look pretty similar, but yeah, we definitely want it to be heading up to this one if if, if possible. So that's a thing to change. Last week, I put these two delivery cannons in here to, to send over the enriched vulcanite over to um, over to Agnea to make sure that uh, Mike always had a, a decent supply of this for the iridium processing, and that was kind of working. It gave it gave him the uh, the, the enriched vulcanite he needed, and it was providing just about enough for the to keep it to keep the system running. However, there was a bit of a problem with the uh, the the supply of it being. A little bit interrupted. It would be. It was a little bursty uh, because we because we weren't didn't have any buffer in there. It was just whatever was whatever was flowing along this belt here was being. Some of it was being taken. It was being taken away by priority over here. But sometimes it wasn't quite full. So I've put in a, a chest here as a buffer. That's now got uh, two thousand four hundred in it. It's filled up completely from this direction and a top up coming in from here, which I'll talk about in a second. 
And this means that we can always fire out as much enriched vulcanite as, uh, as Mike could possibly want. So we should always have plenty of it available flowing out from here. And as you can see at the moment, it looks like he might actually have enough so because these, um, these, these delivery cannons have stopped. So this is also, so we have a supply being brought in from here and this is coming in from the, and this is part of the uh, core mine system. So we've got the core chunks coming through here and being processed. And that means anything that's being produced in these four areas over here is theoretically at least coming from an infinite source and therefore we want to use it by priority. And that's why we have a priority system taking it from here uh, as opposed to this one. This one will only run when there's less than a thousand in there. Because this one comes from all the way over here from one of the uh, one of the ones that comes from a mine system rather than from a uh, rather than from core mining and that means this is non-infinite but the supply is a bit more reliable because we can pull out as much as we want to from there. Um, and so we've got as you can see this one is this one is flowing merrily these ones are not because the corporate the core supply over here seems to be a bit it's a little bit bursty we don't have enough core mines on here but I'll talk about again I'll talk about that in a, a bit more in a moment. And so at the moment, this is all being fed over to Kothar and landing in the delivery cannon chest here where it's passed up to the warehouse, uh, which is then look, looking down here. And yes, as you can see here, we're asking for, um, we're saying if there's less than 10,000 enriched Vulcanite, then ask for some more. And so it, that's 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 the limiting, that's what's stopping it here. We're, we're bringing it, so we're bringing it through as fast as we need it. There is 10,000 up here. We've got a nice supply of it available for the Iridium processing. So that's all working very, very nicely. Uh, over here, you can see we've got the same sort of thing for the um, for the Vulcanite. We're saying if there's less than 1,000 Vulcanite, then ask, then ask for some more. Um, and at the moment, there's 488,000 vulcanite in this in, in, in these uh, in these warehouses. That less than 1,000 is not going to work now that we've switched over to delivery cannons. That's going to have to be changed to maybe 10,000 or maybe even a, maybe 100,000 now that we're bringing it over by spaceship rather than delivery cannon. Um, but I'll um, I'll mention it now and then leave it for uh, Mike to sort out next time because he might want to pick it. He, he might want to have a bit of a think about the numbers because whilst the exact number doesn't matter too much, as we've seen, there is room for about 900,000 here. Uh, <laughs> it would be good to make sure that this was set to set to a reasonably sensible somewhere in the middle and so that we ask for more when before this actually runs out. So there's time for it to get brought over in the spaceship and then brought down and so on. So this should probably be a fairly large number. But yeah, I, as I say, I will uh, will let will let Mike have a think about that and decide what he thinks is sensible. It might also be a good idea to drop this down the both of these down to um to single warehouse stations as well, especially this one because it's currently empty and therefore it'd be an easy for easy fix before the uh, enriched vulcanite starts to arrive by train. And the enriched vulcanite is about ready to start arriving by train. Back over on Agnair, I've put in a, a belt here. So this is again the same belt that's bringing the enriched vulcanite out, pulling it out from here, uh, which takes it away from making normal cubes of vulcanite. But it's required elsewhere, so you know you've got to take some of it out. And that's being fed over to for, over to this belt here, which is running whenever this is a, a less than zero. And that allows, with this signal receiver, this allows us to request a certain amount of the enriched vulcanite over in, in orbit. And then when it's requested, it'll flow down the belt here and go into the warehouse over here to be put into the train to be taken up to uh, to, to Agnorbit and so on as usual. In Agnorbit we're also monitoring the amount of it that's ended up in these warehouses here and sending it down to, down to the ground as well because the idea is that we want to try and track, we want to have a certain amount of uh, enriched vulcanite in the logistics system and that means the total of the amount that's in the warehouse down on Agnea, the amount that's in all of the warehouses up here and the amount that's in the warehouses over here, this one and this one and that should then all be, trans that should then be transmitted back down over to um, Agnea with 10,000 subtracted from it. So at the moment we've ended up with 25,000 so the system's gone a bit nuts and we brought through quite a lot more than we wanted to. Now I was expecting it to be getting on for, to, for close to or maybe even actually double the amount we wanted because of the usual thing where you're not you're not measuring what's in the spaceship so as that's traveling over you can end up with an additional 10,000 being loaded into the warehouses to be put into the spaceship when it comes back. I was not expecting it to be um at sort of uh, at three times, almost getting on for almost three times the amount. Now this isn't broken. This won't. This this should be absolutely fine. And as we start to use it from here, when it starts to get a little bit low, because we sent it all out to Agnair, uh, sorry, we've sent it all out to Kothar and the Kothar ship which lands here, then it's probably going to be all right. However, I am sort of tempted to upgrade it to the uh, the um, sushi system that Mark has been using for the, for uh, all the stuff that comes from Bigrid, which is where you count it in and count it out at each end, so you know, so you actually know how much is in this in the uh, logistic system, whether it's on belts, in spaceships, in warehouses, no matter where it is, you know how much has gone in and how much has gone out, so you know what the total should be. Whereas this system just monitors the amount that there is in various strategic places and just. It assumes that's going to be correct and we know it's not going to be correct but we also know that the amount it's not correct by shouldn't be too much of an issue um Although having said that, it's clearly over. There's there's more than fits in this one warehouse, so it has overflowed a bit more than I wanted it to. Um, there is only uh, 50 stacks of it in here, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, this this warehouse can take 50 stacks of it, but if we get if we got any more brought over, it could start to cause problems. 
Oh, and there we go. The uh, the ship from Agnair has just arrived. As you can as you, as you can see, but if I mouse over these warehouses, it hasn't brought in any more enriched vulcanite. So having it told to stop, having having this this system telling it to stop bringing any more over has has worked. We just have a little bit of it in a in a, in a, a little bit of excess in this warehouse here. And then when once we've used fifteen thousand plus whatever's in there, then we can start. Then we'll start to request a little bit more of it from uh, from Agnea, and hopefully that the system will stabilize out a little bit once we start to pull it out and and, and use it up properly. Um, but the but the Kothar spaceship still needs to be programmed to take that over, and everything over there needs to be set up to unload the enriched vulcanite once it gets to Kothar and uh, and deal with it appropriately. Uh, that's good, so that's going to be a, a next week job, I think. Speaking of the Agnea spaceship, you can see that it's now starting to f uh, feed a load of sulphur in. So that's uh, that's good news. We are um, we're starting to ship sulphur out to Agnea from here because we have so much of it being made um, on Taras as part of the um, Immersite processing. You see, there's loads of it flowing out here, flowing into this warehouse and then flowing through. And the reason it's now able to flow straight through is because we're taking an additional supply of it off to um, to, to Agnea, where it is actually required in in massive massive quantities. Now, until now, I've been making the sulphur out here on Agnea from oil. So we've been bringing in oil by, by train like this, dumping it out into here, cracking it, cracking it down to petroleum gas and then turning it into sulphur. Which, I mean, it works. That is certainly an acceptable way to make sulphur and you can make quite a lot of it that way. Um, but the, event, the oil patch on this planet will eventually run out. If we look down here, we can see there's 334,000 there, 341 there. So about about a million, just over a million left. And I think this was at about two million when we first started. You can see by these blue blobs here, these are the um, these are the pump jacks that have actually run out of oil completely in their patches. That, that, that shows that we've used up a chunk of the oil from over here, and it's, it's definitely starting to fall off a bit. And so we need to we need to keep it we need but we need to keep the system running. We need to keep this supplied with plenty of sulfur. Now there are more oil patches on this planet. I could go out and, and start digging it up somewhere else. There's there's one over here that has another three million in it. So that probably that would last us for a very very long time. Um, there are there may be more. There's, there's another one up there with two two point seven nearly three million in that one as well. So oil can be found. But given we have all of this sulfur being brought from Taras that we're making as a byproduct and would like to get rid of, rather than shipping it down to uh, down to the ground on Norvis, where in theory we've got plenty of oil from other other um, sources, we might as well start we might as well start using it. And so in order to do that. We're bringing it down, as you saw, yeah, bringing it over in the spaceship, which, which means it's then brought down in the train. The train unloads it into these warehouses here. I ended up having to put a second one in because at one point we had so much of it. It was a bit ridiculous. I have since dropped the amount we're asking for a little bit over here. So it's only, only asking for 40,000 at a time now, um, which should fit into these two warehouses without too much trouble. And we've then got a couple of um, loaders bringing it out up here and then splitting it off. Some of it goes over to here to top up the belts over there, but most of it goes down this way to be fed into the system over here. And as you can see, we've got a priority uh, on the on the belt here. So all of the sulfur that we're using at the moment is coming from the is coming from the supply that's being brought from Taras. And that's now being then being merrily used up over here by all of the um, all the processing for making all of the vulcanite um, all the way through, all the way through, and yes, we're able to we're able to do everything from just that one belt. Now, looking at this, I, I do wonder if I should have this belt being added in over here rather than over here. Um, th this one was here first as, as, as a sort of a well. This is the easiest place to shove the uh, sulfur in. I don't need to worry about it too much because we've got plenty of it being made on this planet. I just want to get rid of a little bit of it, and then I realised that actually now having a better supply would be better. Having a, a supply for everything would be better. Let's bring it over this way instead. And this does seem to be working quite nicely. One thing I did consider is whether I need to worry about the amount of um, oil that's going to be coming out of the core chunk processing over here, whether this, this tank is going to fill up. And I don't think it is going to, because over here, yes, we're, produ we're not producing any sulfur anymore, but we are still producing the petroleum gas that's being fed over uh, here to be made into, to be used as, as one of the steps of the um, of making the actual vulcanite itself. And I think this is going to be more than capable of using up enough petroleum gas to keep the uh, to use up all of the oil that's produced from the core processing. So I do expect us to still be using a bit of oil out of these out of these trains. Um, as you can see, actually, if we look here, you can see the, this pump is running. It's running fairly slowly, um, only going to running at 35 to 34 per second, sure. But it is running. We are still taking oil out of the train, so we are still using it gradually to keep the petroleum gas being produced for the vulcanite processing. I should acknowledge that setting this system up over here to make to put the uh, to pass the sulfur through, um, I left that I left that up to Mark because the uh, the system for loading and unloading the spaceships is a little bit. Um, 
complicated. We have systems where the spaceship will not depart until it's got all of the resources that the other planet is asking for. We've got, and, and so, we, so we, because of that, we need to make sure that firstly, the other planet doesn't ask for more than will fit in a spaceship, because that would cause the spaceship system to jam up and never leave. Uh, we, but also for something like this, where we are just top, we're trying to top the sulfur up, we don't want it, this to be the main supply of it, although we do seem to be bringing a load up from, from the ground here. So this clearly hasn't quite worked as it should. Um, so the idea is that this is supposed to take away any excess, but not require any more to be brought up from the ground. So I think some fiddling with the priorities through here and which what belt does what and goes where is going to be required. Because I think it's nice to use up the, the excess from Taras to make sure we're not shipping it back down in through the uh, through the, um, the disposal systems here with this from this station. But I feel it's a bit excessive to be bringing or a bit unnecessary to be bringing the sulphur up from Norvis in order to feed uh, Agnea. Because whilst Agnea does need does use lots and lots of sulfur it is perfectly capable of producing it itself so i think uh, we this needs some fiddling yeah the thing is some of the other planets also need sulfur like big rid and talos they both require sulfur and i think that certainly talos and probably big rid as well don't have decent oil supplies on their planets so they need to be need to be the high priority ones that will definitely get sulfur uh, when it comes in from taras or if that taras supply runs out then they'll get some from from norvis Agnea, however, is just a sink for it. It's a place we can dump it because it's perfectly capable of making its own. And so I think it would make more sense to prioritise that so that it only uses excess from Taras and doesn't use the stuff that's brought up from Norvis. Uh, wiring all that together is going to be fun. Um, it should be possible, but it's going to be a bit of a tangle and a bit of a, maybe a little bit of a headache. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll continue to leave that up to Mark, perhaps. <clears throat> I did a bit of tidying on Agnea too. We used to have a warehouse in the middle of here that all of these uh, pulverizers fed their vulcanite into, um, and then it get to, for it to then be fed out to the uh, the actual vulcanite processing over here. And the reasoning behind that was because I wanted to make sure that um, these these machines never jam, never clogged up. And I was expecting these to produce it faster than these ones used it up. That is clearly not the case. Um, these these four are more than capable of dealing with all of the uh, output over here as fast as it comes through. So I I, I got the numbers wrong there. However. However, I'm thinking that because we still don't have enough vulcanite coming through, despite the sheer amount we're producing, I think it would be quite tempting to put in an additional station here to unload and run these two um, setups here, and then just have these two running off the core processing. In which case, I'll need to put that warehouse to buffer back in, back in again in the middle. Or maybe I won't, actually. Maybe there's going to be enough buffering in this warehouse over here. That might be, that might be quite a nice way to do it, actually. Yes, we'll so these could slow down a little bit, potentially. But have these only feeding these two systems here. Um... Rather than, uh, and then have these two being fed by another one from a mine. I think I think that might be the way I the way I do it because at the moment we are, we we still need a lot more vulcanite to be produced. If we look at the production graph, we can see that oh well okay over the last ten hours we've been we've produced three point two thousand per minute and used two point nine thousand per minute. In the last hour it's been three point seven and three point seven. So it looks like we are just about producing enough to keep the system happy, but we're certainly not it's certainly not backlogging anywhere. And if we look at the graphs on Norvis, we can see that the vulcanite is. There is some of it at the moment, but it's definitely not full. The only ones that are full are the cryonite and the beryllium. Everything else is, well, either completely destitute or a bit of a shortage. And this seems to get up to four lights sometimes and then drop back down to zero, basically depending on whether a spaceship has just been and dropped a load off and where, and how busy the trains have been taking it away. So we, we are still short of vulcanite. I do still need to make more. And so I think I need to have a lot more processing and a lot more processing running over on Agnea. And so because I've already built all this up, I feel like, and we've got all of these massive... Sh stoppages in the in the core processing as you can see quite a lot of time these these machines are not are just straight up not running and so it'd be nice to perhaps just then dedicate two of these to dealing with the, the, uh, the core processed production and then move the other two over to mine a uh, mind up stuff now and then the, the, that brings me on to the next problem in more well, slight slight problem if, if, if we look over here we can see that this this warehouse is empty we're not mining it up quickly and as quickly as we're using it same is true over here, I believe. Yes, this warehouse basically empty. So I'm going to need to put in at least one more um, vulcanite mine, maybe two. Get, we need to get a lot more vulcanite coming up. There are some nice patches over here, 24 million, 17 million, and another 14 million up here. So I think I'll probably run a, a, a line over maybe from here to go underneath the bottom of here and then have a um, have a station in about here that's fed by all three of these patches. Maybe have two stations in that are fed by all three of these patches just to keep everything, run, just to keep just to keep the trains running through as quickly as possible because that that seems to be the uh, there are two short, there are two bottlenecks here one is the the sheer speed we're able to pull it out of the ground and the other is the speed the trains are able to pick it up and bring it over 
And if I'm going to add in more drop-off stations up here, then, I'm, then that's definitely going to be a problem as well. And speaking of drop-off stations, you'll notice I've got two different ones, two, two separate stations here. This one is feeding just one um, vulcanite production system over here. And that train has stopped in it. We've got a full warehouse that's working really nicely. Over here, this one's feeding two, and it's not sufficient. We've got an, a basically, well, you can see the warehouse was empty because these, there's these gaps on the belts, and now the train's going, it's, it's feeding it in, they stopped feeding it in there, and this number is dropping quickly enough that by the time the next train arrives, that will have got down to zero. So I think I need to put in, I need to have a station for each one of these blocks. That's the, that, that's the what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing from this, which is kind of crazy, um, because that means I'm going to need to have a hu fit a huge number of stations in here. So there's one for that one. I need an additional station in here somewhere for this block. Perhaps I could squeeze it in on the top side here. It should just about fit. Yeah, it just about fits. I'll have to I'll have to mess around with the belts a little bit that are coming out of it. But uh, yeah, that could basically be fit fitted in there, or I could put it off the off the bottom of there like that. That that. No, it would it would have to go on the have to go on the top side of top side of there, or put it here, but the other way around. I, and you can't you can't flip stations because I've got uh, rail signals and other stuff in. But I could I could modify this to be to be to have another station there, and then I'll need two more for these two. So I guess here and perhaps here nudging up against this this. Um, uh, pyramid or on the top side. But anyway, there, there, there's room around here to get in a few more stations and, and have the Vulcanite being dropped off a bit more in, in larger quantities, but that will mean I'll need more mines, I'll need more trains, I'll need more, just, just generally more of everything, and that'll allow me to ramp up the uh, production of the Vulcanite over here. In preparation for all of that, I have put in an additional one of these trains. So there's a train there, and if we look at the other end, there is a train here waiting to go down the waiting to go down the elevator. And so, if I can speed up the amount we're pulling through, in, it, that's coming through, flowing through into here, therefore we'll be able to load up the train a bit more quickly. The train will depart soon. And we'll be able to get a bit more throughput because we have two trains doing the uh, do, doing the transfers. I put it, and I've put in a number of signals up here because you need to have signals. But I've put in enough of them that we could then we could potentially have a third train in the rotation as well. Uh, I'm not sure whether that would actually help with the amount of throughput um, because a train loading and a train unloading um, you can because you can only have one train loading and one train unloading at any any at any time um, and the amount of time it takes the train to zip from one station to the other is pretty insignificant so I doubt if putting a third train in will help but I have that capability there if, if available if, if I need it. While I'm looking at it and the train is unloading, you might notice that I've now started using the uh, superior long inserters to unload the train instead of the uh, instead of loaders. And the reason I've done that is because with the with these you can put uh, you can you can blacklist. And so this, these are now unloading absolutely anything except ice and sulfur uh, to put it back into to put it into the into the uh, spaceship. And that's because we had we suddenly get more and more different things coming up here. And because you can only select four different types of thing uh, on on the filters for a uh, for an, for a, uh, a load sorry five things on the filters for a loader. Um, that wasn't enough for the number of different things we have coming up. I tried initially thinking, well, the things that we get lots of, like um, the stone and the and the vulcanite, will have all everything trying to unload those. And then things that we get much less of, like the uh, the the uranium, will have fewer of the uh, loaders doing those. And, and then so we can have one that does one that does uranium, one that does coal, one that does um, iron, that sort of thing, just in order to split separate it off a little bit. But that got rather hard to manage, and it means if I chuck some random other stuff into the system that I want to get rid of then it will get confused and it will get stuck in the train. And so it made a lot, I decided it made a lot more sense to uh, to do it like this. Possibly I should fix the... Uh, oh no, this, this, is, this, tra this train is nearly full now. I think it's probably not necessary to put in a, a warehouse or a, a store of strong boxes down here to, to allow the, uh, the, the, um, the these, these wagons to fill up a bit more quickly because, well, the, the sulfur only stacks to 50, so it's fairly quick to fill the train back up again. Um, it wasn't waiting that long after it had finished unloading, so I think that's probably okay. And it's not ready to go down yet anyway, but if we had more supply at the other end, then this train probably would have filled up and would have set off, and you, you, you see what I'm getting at. I also added in a couple of extra core mines because, well, I wanted a, I wanted more throughput, so I've got this one and the, this one, these, these two new ones up here. Um, as is the way of core mines, adding in additional mines doesn't make as much of a difference as you as you as you you'd, you'd really expect it to because we've got I don't know how, how have we got at the moment? Does it tell me we are currently running at 1.3 per second per core mine, and so yeah, putting in a couple of extra ones doesn't really, will bring the speed of all of the other ones down and not add that much more in themselves. I mean, it is slightly faster. But it's not much faster. It's not enough faster to keep this system running all the time. And yeah, okay, a train has just been. It's dropped a load off. These are now running happily. It's all flowing through. But it's still not. It's not enough. 
And so that covers quite a lot of what's been going on. We've, we've had, had a look at bringing more Vulcanite from Agonair and getting the enriched Vulcanite from Agonair down to Kothar down here, and also then the uh, the mineral water, and in a desperate attempt to try and get a decent amount of iridium flowing from Kothar back over to Norbit and then down to Norvis, where it's used for so many different things, and is why we're struggling so much to get a decent supply of it together. Um, so that's going to be something we're going to need to carry on working on. So come along on Thursday to watch us carrying on with that, and we're, we're, where we'll be doing the for the next stream. Uh, there won't be a stream on. Tuesday this week, however, because I'm away for work. However, the second part of this video will be nudged back to Tuesday because this because this one was nudged later because of the uh, Warp Torio stream and so on and so on and so on. So if you want something else to watch, then uh, maybe go and watch the other the vod of the Warp Torio if you if you haven't already. Uh, the normal um, normal catch up videos will resume on Saturday and Monday of next week as as, as ever. And there should have been a video coming out on Wednesday as well, whether you're a supporter or not. So uh, make, make sure you've seen that. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else going on on the channel. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a couple of days for part two of this video. Bye-bye.